So I consider vulvodynia, again, one of those hidden female pain syndromes that no one talks about. Patients don't talk about it unless providers are astute enough to pick up the symptoms and signs and to screen women. Most patients just go on living in pain. Uh, we know that vulvodynia, which is uh, chronic vulvar pain um, and uh, chronic pain with intercourse as well, um, affects about 14 million women in the United States right now. Uh, about 21% of the female population throughout their lifetime will report having some type of vulvar or vaginal pain syndrome. Um, and we know that the majority of those women just live with that pain. Now, the consequences of that are amazing. I mean, um, women with vulvodynia have the same exact uh, uh, patterns of disability and psychiatric comorbidities and other comorbid pain syndromes such as IBS and uh, fibromyalgia. They're all more common in patients with vulvodynia and vice versa. So we know that there is a huge interaction between these pain syndromes. And vulvodynia just seems to be omitted because it's hard to talk to a woman about her private parts, uh, and especially if you're not trained to do that. So again, vulvodynia, even though it's very, very common, people just don't know to screen for it and talk about it, and they don't know treatment options are available. The easiest way to screen a patient for vulvodynia is to do it when you are screening for other pain syndromes. And first, we have to recognize that when a patient shows up with one of the very famous chronic pain syndromes, such as fibromyalgia, um, uh, IBS, painful bladder syndrome, uh, uh, migraines, um, I'm trying to think what the other one is, chronic fatigue syndrome, um, but anytime you have a patient, a female patient, with those symptoms, at some point when you build up enough trust, you have to start asking about other parts of their quality of life. And one of those is sexual health. And so I tell uh, providers, you know, once you know your patient, you've established some trust, do, do try to screen for the other pain syndromes. So they might come in with acute headaches or chronic headaches, but at some point ask them if they have other pain elsewhere. And one of those sites you need to ask about is their pelvic region, their vaginal areas and their uh, pelvic areas. And once you can, once you do that, I think it's amazing how many times you'll get an answer back saying, yeah, I've actually been having a lot of pain with intercourse or uh, problems with libido and sexual intercourse. And, and then just put that in the bigger context of sexual uh, health uh, questions. You can use, there's a lot of questionnaires out there. There's actually screening questionnaires that are available for vulvodynia that patients can fill out in the waiting room area just like any other questionnaire. So as it turns out in vulvodynia, there are probably many different phenotypes uh, of patients with vulvar pain. Um, there will be the patients that have very localized pain just to the vaginal entrance. There's the people, the women that have more widespread pain. Uh, there are the women that have um, associated muscular pain or myofascial syndromes. Um, there are women that have a lot of um, cognitive and emotional impairment. Um, so they, they come in a variety of ways. They usually present with the same common symptom of vaginal pain, but once you start digging into their history, you realize that like for any other chronic pain syndrome, um, patients vary and you have to target your treatment to that. And so for example, Traditionally, when we thought about vulvar pain, we would just say, well, examine the vagina, um, see if there's anything wrong, if you find any signs of infection or a cancer, and if not, then diagnose the patient with vulvar pain, give them some topical lidocaine, and that's it. Well, now we know that's not so simple. Uh, that's an overly simplistic view of vulvodynia. Um, now we know that we have to look for we do a much more extensive exam physically, but we also do a full biopsychosocial assessment and try to figure out what variables are important to that patient as far as their outcome. So, for example, you may have a patient whose primary um, reason for coming to you is pain improvement. Um, and she really doesn't care much about her sexual function afterwards. But there are some patients that come to you because of impaired sexual function. They actually can put up with the pain, but what really bothers them are all the consequences 
during intercourse or during their intimate moments. And so those things are different than pain, and you have to address those. You can focus on the pain all you want, but if you don't address all the other aspects of their sexual function, you're not going to get very far. And that's what we mean by individualizing, identifying the phenotypes, and then individualizing treatment to those patients. So my summary point for the primary care physician is women are different. They do have uh, some parts that we may shy away from, but we shouldn't. We definitely need to screen women carefully for these unique syndromes uh, or syndromes that are unique to women. And we need to, you know, we, we can't just throw our hands up and say, oh, I don't know what to do. I think if you're taking care of women, you do have to get a little bit of additional education and learn that we have a lot of treatment options for women and don't just, you know, leave patients in pain because they're female. I just hope that doesn't happen.